Not too really sure if I went over the overview, like the final product of when I got the uh, 5.3 and the S10. I thought, you know, I made a lot of how-to videos and stuff I was doing, but I really never explained how everything fit and the difficulties I had. Um, it wasn't really a bad swap. It wasn't really the easiest I've ever done. I got my funnel in there. I was just topping off my antifreeze. Um, I used the eBay headers. I had a buddy of mine had them. Uh, they work fine as long as you get the engine slid all the way back. I also have the swap motor mounts uh, on two eight mounts. Jeep steering shaft, double U joint. Get rid of the rag joint. Uh, the, and I had to notch the frame, but in this situation, I may have gotten away with it, not doing it, but. This is one of them things I did, I'd rather not fight, you know, oil pan clearance to the frame. So, uh, let me explain why I could have avoided cutting the frame. When you're using the Hummer or the muscle car swap oil pan like I used, you know, it's got a pretty narrow enough rear sump, so it'll clear the frame with the engine set all the way back. The problem I had was at the time I had a air AC, you know, they got the evaporator, the AC box in here, and the engine would only go so far back without actually cutting into the AC box. So if you want to run air conditioning, you're going to have to remove your box, notch the panel, the, the corner of it, fiberglass it, and fill it in order to get the engine far enough back. Because if you can't get the engine if far, if you can't get it far enough back, you run into two problems. You're running into the cross, cross member, which you would have to notch at that point, and the driver's side collector would dump right into the frame. You, you couldn't get a pipe on it. There was no way. So I'm like, you know what? This thing's a toy. I really don't care about air conditioning. So my friend in the Carolinas sent me up a non-AC box. I still beat the snot out of the corner down there with a hammer. Because you see like the paint that was removed from the cylinder head when I was trying to fight it with the other box. So I got the engine to go back another three quarters of an inch or an inch. Passenger side header pretty clear, or clears pretty good. The pigtail was for the old oxygen sensor. I just never cut it out. There's still some things I need to clean up, but for the most part, runs, drives, you know, hop in and go. So yeah, you're using the swap mounts. You probably get, you're going to have to slide the engine all the way back. Obviously, you know I'm running an NV40 or 3500 transmission out of a 2000 two-wheel drive Blazer. I use the ICT. A billet uh, accessory drive because the truck drive puts the alternator way up high and I'd have to get a cowl hood and I'm trying to maintain somewhat of a sleeper status I'm you know I don't want to go too extravagant uh, cooling fans Ford Focus 2000 98 through 2000 Ford Focus cooling fans they fit the core of the mid 80s Corvette altern or, um, alternator radiator perfectly yeah, I'm still a little hazy this morning, a little tired. I had a, about a year ago, I did a video where I notched out the core support. Uh, you notch out, you take out the first layer of metal. That way you can put the radiator in in the forward position. It gives you plenty of room, and as you can tell, look how close the water pump snout is to the fans. I got about an inch, and three quarter, two inches. So, it, it just helps clean things up a little bit. The upper hose is obviously two universal hoses. It's not exactly the cleanest. I could have gone with like a F body water pump, but then I'd have to get an F body balancer and then accessory brackets so that way I can route the hose better. So for what I'm doing, it's fine. There's the original fill cap, which I don't use, and the aftermarket Moroso, which has a, I use a 10 pound cap. I don't like a lot of pressure built up in my cooling system. So, just stock truck water pump, stock truck power steering pump. Um, the 2000, it's a Saginaw, I believe it's a Saginaw pump. Man, maybe it isn't a Saginaw pump. I think it's a Saginaw pump. The fittings, the hose is the same as the S10. It's got a metric fitting on both ends. Uh, it goes right together, nothing fancy. Gauges work, I got this nice adapter here from... ICT billet. I could have gone a little shorter, but I wasn't sure how long the probe was. I could have gone just a hair shorter, but and same in the back. You got your oil pressure sender to a auto meter adapter M14 by one and a half to one eighth NPT adapter. So 
Um, changing the transmission, I already put a, I had to change the transmission out. It wasn't easy because you're fighting the firewall. You had to move the engine all the way forward and jack it up. So, this is a little bit of a challenge. And uh, I'm running a carb setup. People can give me flack all they want. I had the stuff laying around. I had an extra demon carb laying around. The intake and the box from originally from the Cutlass. I was thinking about selling it, but I was like, you know, I'm just going to hang on to it. I like the simplicity of it. I run a return style fuel filter to my fuel pressure gauge and regulator. I set it at about 3.5 PSI. You don't need a lot of fuel pressure anymore with all the ethanol and the gas. You know, it was back in the day when you had leaded fuel. The fuel was, you know, volume. You know, the volume of it was it was way more denser fuel, so you needed more pressure to run it. In the older carbs, but nowadays with the alcohol, you can run a lower pressure, and the thing performs flawlessly. Stock uh, TBI fuel pump, and like I said, I got a return style filter, so I'm not loading the pump up with excessive pressure. Pretty much it. Alternator was a pretty simple hookup. Uh, one wire to the plug, which goes to the back to the gauge. Your main lug here, which goes back to your fusible links for your system, and then obviously the starter. Uh, factory starter fits nicely, snug underneath there. So um, it's a pretty simple swap, but like I said, it, it can be challenging if you're trying to run air conditioning, depending on the oil pan you run, whether or not you got to cut the frame. So, that's about it, guys. I thought I'd give you a little update, something a little different, because I've been still toying with this bad boy. I'm waiting on, i got to get uh, different push rods for it. I'm waiting for my push rod checker to come in the mail, and uh, hopefully button it up and have this thing running soon. So, alrighty. You guys enjoy the rest of your day.